Hello folks, welcome back, we are at Wednesday, we are halfway through the week. Hope you're doing well, hope you're on the downward turn towards the weekend. And hey, you know, if you're not, and if you're having a stressful week, then hopefully this video can go some way to alleviating that a little bit and giving you some joy, giving you some uh, chill out time to get away from the world for a little while. There are a few amazing stories today, and one of them at the end, I did a pre-read, or a pre-read of the first half yesterday, and, and I almost didn't want to spoil it for myself, because I could see something major coming, so I, <laughs> I closed the hobby nightmare, and uh, didn't touch it for the rest of the night, so hopefully, I made the right decision, and it's a funny one, but we'll see. So, let's get into it, shall we? If you like what I do, please subscribe, we are on our way to 15,000 subscribers towards the end of the year, if you can help me get there and you're a new person around here, that would mean a hell of a lot to me. And if you want to be involved in the prize draw, that is this Sunday. All you need to do is be a part of the Patreon or be a member of the channel. Either way, you're supporting me financially on the channel and you're a legend for doing so. If you are going to get any models in the next few weeks, make sure you head over to Composite Games who are sponsoring that prize draw. Use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off their stock at checkout. So, Blood Raven says... Let me just take a quick sip of Yorkshire tea. There's honestly nothing better, right? The thing with Yorkshire tea is, if you have another tea, like a Tetley's or a Thai Fu or um, whatever, right? Um, Earl Grey, whatever. It never tastes correct. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't taste correct. Only Yorkshire tea tastes like tea when you've had Yorkshire tea. It's weird. But hey, Blood Raven says, Hey North, Blood Raven 93 again. Hope you're doing well. I am, thank you. This nightmare took place last Friday and has, and has to do with dealing with a power gamer friend. Me and my friend, we'll call Chris, he, and he is 24, arranged to have a 3,000 point game with his brother, who we'll call Steve, who is 36. Okay, before we even go anywhere else, a 3,000 point game is uh, asking for trouble. I'm telling you now. You're going to be there all day, and people are going to get annoyed. I've had one good 3,000 point game. It was against a lad who used to come to my Games Workshop um, back in the day. When I was working for Games Workshop, uh, as a staff member, not as a, not as a manager. And we went over a, a narrative style game that we wanted to play. And we played that narrative style game on the tabletop and had amazing fun, right? It ended in a draw, because in, in lore it ends in a draw, it also ended in a draw on the tabletop, and we went home and everything was cool. It was really, really fun. Anyway, it was to be a two versus one game. Myself with 3,000 points, with Chris and Steve having 1,500 points each. We decided we could, we could have the game at Steve's house, and headed off to have the game. Chris brought his Space Wolves, and Steve used his Imperial Guard tanks. I, on the other hand, brought my newly revamped Imperial Fists army. I faced Steve's tanks before, but although it can be a bit dull to fight against, he always added variety into his army, such as a mix of Sentinels, Lehman Russ battle tanks, and heavy weapons teams. This time, however, he scrapped all of those to be even more of a power gamer by taking a tank commander and three Shadow Sword super heavy tanks. Guy obviously likes fun. At first, the game went fairly well. My Devastators with heavy bolters managed to deal six mortal wounds to Chris's Thunderwolf cavalry, and my Land Raider, Raider Prometheus, managed to knock his Venerable Dreadnought down to two wounds. A pretty standard and decent first turn. For context, before moving on to Chris and Steve's turn, my army consisted of a Terminator Captain, three Firstborn Lieutenants, two Primaris Lieutenants, two squads of ten Heavy Intercessors, Two squads of 10 Stern Guard, three squads of Devastators, two Land Raider Prometheus tanks, and two Typhon Siege tanks. That's a lot of stuff for 3,000 points. Well done to you. When Steve began shooting, he mentioned that the Shadow Swords have a damage of 12. And it was at this point I realised this was going to be a very dull game, of not being able to make any saving throws. And the only movement being picking up my models and putting them in the dead pile. By the end of Steve's turn, all three of his Shadow Swords had wiped out my Typhons, the Land Raiders, and one squad of Devastators. 
To state the obvious, I was pretty pissed. At the end of the game, I just upright said to Steve, to Steve, dude, I'm not playing against those again. There's literally no, there's literally no point. He responded rather childish, childishly, making an L shape with his fingers and calling me a sore loser. Yeah, don't play him again. Don't play him again then. Just say, look, if that's your attitude, I'm moving on. I just won't play you again. You know? It's supposed to be a fun game, and it's two against one already, and I wiped off the board in turn one. Are you, are you kidding me? Now, don't get, don't get me wrong. The game does swing like that sometimes. It does. But uh, three Shadow Swords? Uh, come on, dude. There's playing the game. As I say, it's my favourite saying. There's playing the game, and then there's playing the game, isn't there? Right? I mean, sure. He goes on to say, I don't like losing. No one does. But what makes the game fun for me is that even if I'm going against a powerful army, that's the new meta or something, I have a chance of winning. Because most units can't one-shot everything for an easy victory. If I wanted an easy victory with no effort for fun, I would have just brought my three Warhound Titans. He replied to me, looking at him disappointingly, and said, Dude, the aim of the game is to win no matter what. It's not against the rules. Besides, your Blood Ravens are OP. You should have brought them. Firstly, I said, uh, no, the aim is not to win at all costs, it's to have fun. Of course, no one, no one wants to lose and you should try to win, but not at the cost of bad sportsmanship. Secondly, my ravens aren't that OP, they're designed to be high risk, high reward. If the unit in, in drop pods don't manage to kill their target or make the charge roll, then they'll get massacred. None of my armies were designed to be OP anyway, because I make armies to have a certain theme. Hence. While I mostly have heavy bolters in my Imperial Fists army, it fits their theme, even if it costs me games because I could have chosen more powerful weapons. The most powerful weapon in my Fist army is the Typhon, which has a range of 24 inches, so there is a huge risk it will be destroyed before it's even in range. The games I like involve risks versus rewards and themes. Steve just chuckled and said, uh, well, to be fair, dude, with that mindset, not using good units while they're available, it's no wonder you, you, you lose most games. You should have brought your titans. Just just write this guy off, dude. Th th just bring your titans argument. You're not in the same realm as this guy, alright? I don't mean that derogatively. I mean that, like, literally. You're different gamers. You're different gamers looking for different things. Say your piece and move on. Say, look, I'm not playing you again. See you later, you know? We don't want the same thing from the hobby. You want to win at all costs, and I want to have fun. There. Move on. I won't write the full discussion since it was just back and forth for the, and, and the same for 20 minutes. But I responded by simply saying, Listen, I wouldn't bring a Titan to a normal 40k game because I'm not a dick. Plus, a Warhound has 40 wounds. The Shadow Swords Volcano Cannon is strength F24, minus 5, da minus 5 AP, damage 12. Which means you can potentially one-shot all three Titans with a... Si <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can essentially one-shot all three Titans. If you can one-shot a Titan with a certain tank, and you're bringing three of them when I'm not bringing any Titans, that's not just OP, that's a dick move and shows little sportsmanship and a lack of interest in your opponent having fun. Okay. It got a bit funny when Steve and Chris's mum burst through the back door and shouted, Steve, play nicely. Yeah, this is this is when it gets a bit weird, dude. You know what I mean? Me and Chris just burst out laughing at a man nearly 40 getting shouted at by his mum to play nicely with the other boys. After the air had cooled down, me and Chris left at around 11pm and said and said to me that he, agreed, uh, that he agreed with me and that the next time we have a game, he doesn't want his brother to join us. What do you think, North? Do you agree with me and Chris, or am I just being a sore loser? Cheers, all the best. I don't think you're being a sore loser. No, I just think you've, you've chosen the wrong opponent. You know, you, if you've followed this channel long enough, Blood Raven, you know my, my stance on this. 40k is as much about choosing your opponent as it is choosing your army and your rules. That's it. it, it it's that important. If you don't choose the, 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 wrong, the correct opponent... You will have games like this, where you you leave the game frustrated and wondering why you ever got into this hobby in the first place. And that is the worst feeling to have, because we spend so much time and energy and money on making sure that, you know, the things we do in the hobby are worthwhile and cool, right? Somebody who takes that away from you, that's not fun. And so I would move on, not play that guy again. I wouldn't ostracize him, but if he just doesn't get it, 
If he just does, do if he doesn't get, you were being very reasonable here, by the way, and saying, look, it, I, I don't care about losing, but I'd like you to be a good sportsman about it, please. And, you know, not bring, I'd like to have a chance of winning, right? That's not a dick move. Like, that's fine. You, you, you've said you've said your piece there. And I would say to him, give him an honest chance. Say, look, these are the games I would like to play. You don't have to acquiesce your playing style to me. You don't. You play the hobby in whatever way you want. But I don't find the way you play the hobby to be fun or conductive to me having fun. So I'm not going to play you again if that's how you're going to play. That's it. Move on, right? The whole world doesn't have to acquiesce to your feelings. But at the end of the day, if you don't like something, you're, you're under no obligation to be there. This is a hobby. Move on, right? Cool. Awesome. Andrea says, Hi North, my name is Andrea, and I've been following your channel for a long time. Okay, I'm guessing you're either a woman or you're Italian and a guy. I finally decided to send in my own small Italian nightmare. Hey, look at that. I finally decided to send in my own small Italian nightmare. Hoping my English holds up. I used to be one of those 13 year old kids lurking in hobby stores watching games from a distance and buying codex after codex without ever actually getting an army. Dude, your English is fantastic. What are you talking about? This is great. You, you, you are writing better than most English people that I've come across on this channel. Um, sorry guys. The hobby was out of my price range, quite simply. But I was in love with the lore, so me and my friends resorted to cardboard and books to play. We even played game after game in basements, and I truly believe we never actually got the rules right, but it was a fun time. That's the true love of the hobby there, you know what I mean? When you've got like little cardboard pieces to play with. I used to do it with toys, when I used to, I used to learn with toys because I couldn't afford the models. So I would get toys to represent different units, and they would move the right distances and things like that. And I'd do line of sight and things, and I'd practice the, the, the rules by using non-model things. So I didn't have to spend money to learn the rules. So by the time I actually was ready to do 40k, and I'd gotten a few things for Christmas, I was ready to jump in, you know, feet first and, and have, have a good time. I still got things wrong. I was playing Eldar in 3rd edition, right? I was getting things wrong. But, uh, you know, it was fun. I know. After high school, my interaction with 40k became purely about lore. I never really thought I would be good enough to paint something, so I never pulled the trigger in starting my own army. I was 31 when this changed. I met my now wife, who didn't even know what Warhammer was, and merely talking about the hobby got, uh, got her the idea to buy me a small starter box. What a woman. What a woman. I started building and painting up a Black Templar army, and my hobby journey could finally begin. After putting together 2,000 points, I wanted to play with people who knew how to. I wanted to learn everything and was ready to be crushed into dust with a smile on my face. I found a fairly large wargaming club near my house. I asked for a game and was met by one of the organisers with a beautiful Custodes army. This was right after the new 9th edition Custodes Codex had dropped and before it was nerfed. I won't go into details about the armies, but let's just say my Templar force was built with a narrative in mind. I knew I was going to lose, but when I got the first turn and my Redemptor took his Dreadnought to one wound in one beautiful flash of overcharged plasma, I felt like this was going to be an epic bloodbath. North, I didn't kill anything. Custodes were overpowered, yes. His army was competitive, while mine was just a noob army, yes. I see no problem in this. I went there to be crushed, to play with competitive people, but I didn't expect what fate had in store for me. Not some asshole who mocked me, not that guy, just a game where I killed nothing. Not a model, not even a Sister of Silence. I laughed the first two turns, handled the rising rage, rage in the third, hid my depression for the remaining two rounds. We had a beer and laughed about it after the game, and I have nothing but respect for the guy who slaughtered me, but it was horrible. The stuff of true nightmares. It's the wargame equivalent of walking into a classroom naked. I finally got my first kill and win in my second game against a Blood Angel player, an absolute noob like me, and I'm secretly preparing my army for revenge. Have a good one, and if you ever travel to Rome, there's a beer and a game waiting for you. I'd love to play Black Templars, and I am going to Rome uh, sometime this year. I'm planning on going to Rome, yes. I, I'm planning on, on taking the missus to Rome to earn some serious brownie points, because, you know, when, when Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty drops out, she's not going to see me. For ages. 
So I'm I'm planning on getting over there to uh, earn some serious brownie points. Guys, if you ever want to earn brownie points with your woman and you can afford it, take it to Paris or Rome. I don't care how not romantic she is. You could be going out with the biggest metalhead woman in the world who shows no interest in romance, right? She's just there to just... Total tomboy, no interest. As soon as you say, I'm taking you to Rome, watch her turn into a little five-year-old girl. I'm telling you now. Absolutely telling you now. Anyway, um, good on you, man. I think you picked the wrong opponent for your first game, though, you know? I mean, you had fun. That's the main thing. But, like, there are a lot of people out there who would get turned off by the hobby with that much of a stomping and not killing anything. That sucks, dude. I really hope the guy nursed you through it and coached you through it and said, look, games aren't normally like this. You know, this is just beginner's bad luck. Don't worry about it. And hey, you had your second win as well. So your second win would have done a lot to put a lot of wind in your sails. And at least, playing against the guy who knows what he's doing, that fills you with a lot of confidence. Because even if you're losing the game, you're getting your rules right. And you, you're, you know you're getting your rules right because this guy who, you know, does his rules and knows them very well, hasn't pulled you up on anything. Here's one of your models, by the way. This is your Black Templar that you sent in. That is a cool, cool-looking model, and you clearly have some talent, my friend. Uh, that is a really cool-looking model. I would uh, ink the shit out of that. I say this all the time. All the metal parts, uh, mix some Seraphim Sepia and some Noln Oil and some Agrax Earthshade with some water and put it all over the um, golden parts and then get some Noln Oil and, and lightly put it where the uh, golden parts meet the lighter parts of the armor, right? Especially on that left shoulder pad there, the, the, the turquoise one. Is that turquoise? I don't know. Uh, but do it there as well, and that would, that would make it pop really nicely. But anyway, the chest bit, you know, bit on the leg, anywhere that's gold needs to be inked a little bit to bring in. But apart from that, love it. And I love the fact that you're even um, uh, highlighting as well. Highlighting is something that people don't do when they're beginners. So the fact that you're trying it now, is a really, really, really good sign for the future. That's good stuff. That's a really nicely painted model. Anyway, moving on. Spoon says, Alright, North. Got a good one here for you from a few years ago and the height of 7th edition and my local hobby store. It's a lovely place, but since the incident is kind of famous in the local area and beyond, I won't name the location. Maybe you've heard of it. If you have, then please say. Our store was a pretty cool place in all honesty. We had several gaming groups that would meet there all the time to go over tournament plans and lists, but unlike most teams of this calibre, they had a lot of time for others and were genuinely cool guys to be around. They'd go out of their way to answer questions and would drop what they were doing in a second to give beginners games that, they, that were both fair, fluffy and easy to win, if the beginner used their meagre knowledge of their forces. They aren't, there aren't a lot of tournament going folks who would do this in my experience and I'm a tournament veteran of 20 plus years. That is true, that is true and you know what, there's nothing more powerful in the world than a tournament going player, right, a full time tournament going player who is a good teacher. Mate, those are gold dust. If, you, if there's one of those out there, cherish them. Those are the guys, those, those are the guys you want to be learning at the feet from. If you want to get your get your hobby skills up to up to snuff. Anyway, continuing on. One of the tournament crowd was Alfie. I changed his name, but my God, does it suit him? He was small, round, trench coat wearing, and ironically, one of the coolest guys in the store. He was easily one of the best players in the store, as he'd constantly win small events, and he'd won several GTs before with his amazing list building skills and in the moment tactical awareness. I once saw him win a tough game at a GT, a grand tournament, against an opponent most thought was unbeatable by placing his land raider in the line of sight of the Tau guns so they could not target the models he was moving to take the centre objective near the end of the game to win the game. A brilliant piece of play and I still remember it to this day. Despite this though, Alfie was easily and he easily had the worst record in the store in terms of games. Why? He didn't he didn't put his ego in the in the game. Sorry, he didn't have any ego in the game away from tournaments. 
and took his role as a custodian of his hobby very seriously. He now owns a, uh, a company doing 3D printing and has his own store. He is doing great business. Anyway, Alfie was a great dude and always was good to have a natter and a cup of tea with. A total warning of not judging a book by its cover. I would have just I would have dismissed him as one of those neckbeards, but the guy was the heart and soul of the place at times. Another thing to tell you about Alfie, he was based as fuck. He pulled no punches, wanted everybody to get along and have a good time no matter their background, and generally found anyone ruining it for others to be irritating and worthy of chastisement. When one of our regulars came in with a Che Guevara t-shirt on and, and starting spout, and started spouting nonsense, uh, uh, Alfie pointed to it, his t-shirt, and said, uh, What is that? You've never been to Cuba, you big wanker. <laughs> You've never been to Cuba. <laughs> There's something funny about the insult, you big wanker. That just tickles me. What's with that? You've never even been to Cuba, you big wanker. <laughs> it just it just annihilates every socialist point he's got on his head. Everyone he was thinking of, every retort he was thinking of, gone. Absolutely gone. Just points to the Che Guevara t-shirt. What's with that? You've never even been to Cuba, you big wanker. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Uh, when playing... Uh, quite a... Uh, sorry. Uh, you've attached a meme here for me to put on. And you've said don't look at it. So I'm just going to... It's black here. Right, I'm going to attach it and I'll, and I'll put it on when I think the moment's right. Okay. So I've been told to put this meme on when I think the, mom the moment is right. I can't see what it is, so... I hope it's not rude. If it's rude, I you're going to go down in my estimation. <laughs> when playing quite a hot girl, she declared she was about to wipe his army off the table. His response was, Wipe my balls, sister, with a warm, wet, chamois leather sponge. <laughs> uh, she laughed, he winked and continued the game. She won. He shook her hand and told her, Well, alrighty then, I'll wipe my own balls. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. That's, I like this guy. I like this guy. I like this guy. You, you gotta love a guy who rolls with the punches. Do you know what I mean? I, like, I love it. That's good. Point is, he took it as well as he gave it. And if you were the same as him... You and him were basically related from that point in his eyes. You were one of his guys, or girls. He was awkward at times, but, but, but was a totally good bloke. So when the woke crowd started to come into the store, they found a natural target in Alfie. I'll be honest, that when it started happening, none of us saw it for what it was. Just a few people brought in by the Che Guevara guy who loved the hobby. No biggie. They started making big points about female space marines inclusion quote unquote and when the 2016 US election came around they were rabid and anyone even discussing Donald Trump in a positive light would be asked to leave the store by them it was not their store no one had ever discussed any politic in the store and the store owner was sure to remind them of that and that politics had no place in the store the atmosphere was oppressive when they were in there and Alfie would love barbing them with his comments when they looked his way. It was a war of attrition. When Trump did win the election, Alfie walked in wearing a bright red leather trench coat and declared, Well, 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 how are we today? <laughs> to laughter and rounds of applause. <laughs> you can tell this dude's not even a, a, a Trump dude. He's, he's just a guy who likes poking fun. And people who take themselves far too seriously. I like that. And the effort he goes to to go and get a red trench coat as well. You gotta you gotta respect the hustle. You gotta respect that. You know, this guy is completely dedicated to shit housery, and you gotta respect that. Um Listen, when when you bring politics into a store, I'm gonna be completely honest here, guys. When you we've said it on the channel before, right? We've said it on the channel before. When you start bringing politics into a store, into the hobby, you just suck all the energy out of a room. It's gone. You know what I mean? It's just gone. Like, you don't have any good energy in the store anymore. 
everyone starts getting their backs up because at the end of the day politics are very much subversive we, we don't agree most of us don't totally agree in our politics and our political views i have a friend of mine who i've been friends with for 15 16 years and he's drifted further and further to the, to the left as he's grown older and nowadays i can't take him out without him going on about politics and i've had to say to him look i'm not interested in politics man i'm just not i'm not interested in discussing politics i want to have a pint right you, you know you know i'm a centrist who leans right on some things left on other things it's just where i am i think we're all in that area we're all we're all either left of center or right of center that's where we are right you're way on the left that's all up to you but i don't want to discuss it whilst i'm drinking my fucking pint of madri or whatever it is I'm, I'm drinking right now right just leave me alone to the point now where i basically cut him off like i've just i've, I'm, I've had enough like i've just we went away for his weekend a little while ago and it was just like he didn't discuss politics but there was just an atmosphere there you know there was just an atmosphere of haughtiness and holier than thou hippiness and it's not my bag it's not my energy at all you know i'm not a hippie I'm going to come out and say that straight away. I like nature, but I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those guys. And I don't wag my finger at people because they're not vegan. You know, I, I just don't care. You know, you live your life. If you're not hurting me, fine. You're not hurting anyone else, fine. Live your life, you know. Live and let live. So, yeah, it, it's a shame, but it does happen. It does happen. Uh, carrying on. As we moved into the spring of 2017, we knew 8th edition was on the horizon. A huge change for the hobby. Alfie started doing work for the shop that would lead him to ruin uh, to, to run his sorry Alfie started doing work for the shop that would lead him to run his own one day that's really cool that's really cool when the big day of 8th edition approached the preparations and decorations of the store ramped up when the woke, when the woke crowd arrived Alfie was just not feeling it that day so headed outside into the fresh air to put some decorations up over the store sign on his ladder. The arguments in the store started almost immediately as frictions were again caused, especially when one of the woke folk, James, headed to the register to complain and I shit you not, one of our regulars was painting his sisters of battle pink and at this was completely mocking femininity and was inherently sexist. Some of these if I had not run my own store, right, and I had not, like, been in this sphere for a long time, I would call most of this bullshit. But I know it happens. I know it happens because it's happened to me. I know I know it happens. I've seen it happen. Some people out there are warped. Absolutely warped. You know, brainlets. Honestly. Before our store manager can get a, can get a word in, a loud crack is heard, and then a huge smash as Alfie comes flying through the store window like Ralph fucking Wiggum from The Simpsons. <laughs> I've just seen what that meme is. <laughs> I've just seen what that meme is. I want this guy to be wearing a leather trench coat <laughs> as he just falls in like that. But don't. <laughs> oh my god he lands on the display board at the window with a thud and a loud groan we all rush over to him as he's laying face down and trying to get up the woke crowd gather round to see what is happening and james is smiling like a cheshire cat what a prick that doesn't last long though Alfie looks up at him and points a shaking finger at him that's kind of covered in blood. No politics in store, asshole, he breathes, like that, like that kid in the wheelchair from Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> a few of us laugh as another regular calls an ambulance. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, at least we now know you're okay and on form, the manager sighs. He doesn't seem too unhappy about the window. He was fully insured, though, and it would be replaced overnight because we were in, a, we were in a, an actual shopping centre in the city centre. 
He told me, uh, and it was clear, we were near closing anyway, as it was near nearer six o'clock. That is indeed what happened, so all he had to do was clear some glass and get everybody out so we could go home. The shopping centre we were in handled the rest overnight, even though we were outside. The store is still there and doing well, and, as I said, Alfie has his own hobby business now, and is kind of an urban legend in this area. Love your long time, Spoons. <laughs> well, I, I, you know what, I, I can't, I can't. I can't have a go at that. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I've seen so there have been so, nerds are nerds are awful most of the time for like normal man jobs. Most of us are. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Most of us are right. Most of us aren't very good at fixing engines, being on ladders, things like that. You know, um, some of us are. I've known engineering dudes. I've got a friend. My friend Steady. He, he's a great engineer. If I my car breaks down. Or something happened, God forbid, to my, my computer or whatever. I know I can call him, and if he's in if he's in the area, he could just fix it, or tell me what's wrong with it in five minutes. You know what I mean? Because he just he's that way inclined. Um, but oh, there's other other mates of mine. You know who you are, who are like physicists and shit, but couldn't fix a fucking toaster like me. You know, and it, it, we're just not very good at that kind of shit. Uh, most of us are in the second camp, I think. And I think Alfie's there as well. Like he's just out, like trying to hang up a big space marine, and just goes, oh, and it goes through the actual window. That's hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Anyway, uh, brilliant. Love your long time. I will speak to you tomorrow. Uh, there, were, there is a hobby rant tomorrow. I know because I wrote the script, but I need to find it here and make sure that I actually have it. One second. Let me have a little look. See here, which one is it? Ah, yes, we're talking tomorrow about the huge weakness, the overall weakness of Warhammer Forty Thousand as a setting, as a hobby and a setting combined. It is going to be an epic rant, a huge rant. So if you can, be here tomorrow for that. It's going to be awesome. I love you all long time. I'll speak to you tomorrow for that rant, and then on Friday for some more hobby nightmares. Love you all. Speak to you soon. Bye now.